16 of Advent, and I pulled the little chocolate out, and it's, it's upside down. <laughs> it's a candle, and it's got the white stuff on it. Uh, this this little uh, chocolate is does not look desirable. I'm still not back on track today. It's, gosh, it's like 8.30 at night. I'm ready for bed. I was going to do laundry, but I couldn't get any more quarters in the machine. I totally bleached out the machine, disinfected it, um, put a wash through to clean it out, to clean all the previous person's soap out. And now I went to go wash my towels and I could only get a dollar of quarters and the thing is full. So I can't do my laundry tonight. Gonna have to get up. I don't know when the guy's going to come and empty the quarters and they're turning the power off Saturday. So I best get to the laundromat in the morning. So that's what I got to do. I got to get up and go to the laundromat. So it's day 16 of Vlogmas, and I'm not back on track with my WW, so uh, you don't need to know what I ate. <laughs> I ate too much. Well, I didn't even have dinner because I had a big tostada for lunch, and I had some crackers. Well, I guess I had some crackers for dinner. I feel like making dinner. My refrigerator's empty now, so I'm ready for the electricity to be put off. I straightened my hair out today to go to job interview. Yay! So that's why I have some nice shiny straight hair. I don't know when you flat iron it, it seems to get shinier. I don't know why. <laughs> no idea why. I do have a little eyeshadow on and I put my eyebrows on a little blush, but I don't have lipstick on because I've been. I took it off before I had lunch. Okay. So it's so late because I went to the interview. It was like at eleven twenty today. So of course I spent the money, the money, the morning uh, making breakfast and getting ready to go um, there. And then it's an hour drive, and it was easy. I was able to park and find a restroom right quick and get in there on time. Plenty of time. It was a group interview. It was not a one-on-one. -on -one. There were four of us, and it was probably the funnest interview I've ever had. It kind of was simple. Uh, you know, when I before I put the application, it, it didn't really fill out an application. It was just like a profile, and then it, they just said, describe yourself in 300 words or less, and I kind of think that's where, what they looked at, and then they called you for the uh, in-person interview. So they just based it on that. So now they're doing a background check where they're going to see everywhere I've worked and if I've committed any crimes or <laughs> if I'm dead or whatever. I don't know. Their background check, they're going to check everything. So I had to go unlock all my... Uh, I have all my things locked up. <laughs> so they're going to need to see that. So that's... It'll, I'll lock it back up tomorrow. Um... Just because there's been so many data breaches, so it's it's a good thing to just lock up all your all your stuff so that people can't get in there. They say even when it's locked that potential employers could see, but I didn't want I don't know something to go wrong with that and have them go, oh, I wonder what she's hiding. I'm not hiding anything, just trying to protect myself. Because I think like T Mobile had a really big data breach just after I switched over to them. I mean, it was huge. So you got to protect yourself because there's a lot of people out there trying to trying to get into your stuff, you know? Okay. So chapter 16 uh, was about... I'm, I'll put the link below. I'm tired. I'm ready for bed. Uh, the parable of the dishonest steward, the application of that parable. It's kind of like if you can't be trustworthy in small things, you're not going to be given more because you won't be trustworthy in the bigger things and vice versa. If you're trustworthy in the smaller things, then you're ready to do the bigger things because you're going to be trustworthy in that. And then they had saying against the Pharisees. 
You justify yourselves in the sight of others, but God knows your hearts. For what is of human esteem is an abomination in the sight of God. And then sayings about the law. And then sayings about divorce. This one's real short. It's like everyone who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. And the one who marries a woman divorced from her husband commits adultery. It's like I always look at that because I'm divorced. I've been divorced for like almost 31 years. So I don't even date. So it's okay. I'm not committing those things. I don't even know if he's still alive. I don't know where he is. My father, when my father was going for his radiation, I was sitting by his bedside with him. And he says, you know, can I give you the money to get an annulment? Because at the Catholic Church, you can, I probably can get an annulment based on, one priest said that my husband was mentally incapable of making that decision that, or whatever, because of his, whatever, his mental, <sighs> he couldn't even solve his own, um, take his medication to solve his own thing, so I probably could have gotten an annulment, but it costs money, and my dad's like, let me pay for an annulment, and, uh, I don't want you to be a spinster. <laughs> it's like, my dad, I think I have bigger issues here right now. Than that, I'm fine. <laughs> I love my dad so much, and he loves me. <laughs> dad is in he mom's with him now too in heaven. So, anyway, then that goes on to the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. Lazarus was the poor guy, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. So when the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. And the rich man also died and was buried. And from the netherworld where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. <sighs> Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. And then he said, I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. So we need to use our time wisely here on earth while we can. Life is short. Um, if, if we have some poor person sitting out at our door, <laughs> invite them in for dinner. My goodness. Don't don't be hoarding it all for yourself. I mean, you know, that type of thing. We need to share what we have here. I mean, because if we're trusted with that and we use it to build up the kingdom of God, um, you know, we would hopefully not end up in those flames. So anyway... How to do it to the WW. Oh, man. I don't know. Just use the time I can. I have 18 months to lose this weight. I don't want to end up at the end of the 18 months in misery. I want to end up on the other side. I want to be on the other side. <laughs> Smiling. 
Speaking of which, I have to go, oh, I passed my background check and everything. Um, did I say I was filling out all kinds of paperwork? That's why I'm so late on this video. Um, all this employment stuff for the job and uh, where's your tires? So they're they're going to do a background check. So my employment is contingent on completing all these tasks of all the employee paperwork, the all the forms and initialing all the privacy and all the all the various things. And uh, so I've submitted everything. <laughs> I finished finished all the tasks. So, but I don't go back till next Thursday. I'm gonna they're gonna check all my paperwork and make sure I'm legit and. Then send me to get my uniform. So I got to get back on track before I go get my uniform. Uh, so I'm coming out of retirement now. <laughs> so I had to decide, am I going to collect Social Security or am I going to get a job and continue to save for retirement? It's like I told everybody who goes, but you're retired. Now you're retired. <laughs> not necessarily. My plan was not to retire. My plan has always been to leave what I was doing and to move on to something else to make a little change. So I don't have to make as much money at a job now because I'm getting a little bit from my retirement annuity. And then when I have this job, I'll see how much I'm making. If I'm making over the amount for the Social Security benefits, then I'll have to decide what I'm going to do from there. Because you don't want to collect Social Security and then go over the threshold, income threshold, and then have them take two dollars out for every dollar or whatever the calculation is. But they start taking it out. They start. You don't get it. You they they don't pay you that whole benefit because you're making too much money. But it's nice that you can still work part time and collect that and. The retirement benefit that I get from the federal government, that doesn't count towards that income threshold because it's not wages. So it's it's wages that counts. And so now I'm going to be getting wages again, minimum wage. <laughs> so, I think it said something else when I applied and then the paperwork I signed said something else. So I'm sure they'll clarify that. But uh, that was only a dollar difference, but every dollar counts, right? <laughs> Uh, oh, excuse me, I'm tired. I got up and I was hoping to have the laundry done and just sleep a little bit, you know, because I usually get up like at five when I'm doing laundry in the morning. I thought, oh, I'll just do it tonight. Uh, <laughs> no, there's no way I'm going to the laundromat tonight. I'll just get up in the morning and go to the laundromat. But, um, so anyway, it's already going to be one. Christmas is a week from Saturday. Can you believe it? My presents have arrived and my brother opened one of my niece's presents. He goes, you got her. And I go, why did you open the box? It didn't have your name on it. I go, I think she's going to like it. Her sister, the same thing. Um, they're little finger pianos because my niece, she likes, um, she plays the drums, but... Um, she likes those, um, they're called fidgets. They're just things you pop with your, with your fingers and stuff. And I thought, well, I have a, it's a, called a kim, kalimba, kalimba. It's a finger piano and you play it with your thumbs and uh, it makes music. It's, <laughs> I pull mine, I'll show you one time. I'll, I'll, I don't have it handy right here, but um, or maybe I can get it. It's a little musical thing, and you just you play it with your with your thumbs. You just pick at them like this. And you just so you know you can just. I got a book of. Um, Christmas songs. I was gonna go play it for him, but now I'm gonna be going to uh, my job, which which is fine. So I'm not gonna be spending the week over there.
Anyway, it's a fun little thing. She likes to do stuff with their fingers, and I figure they can just sit there and play with their uh, finger piano. What is on it? Anyway, that's a long enough video. So I'm out of retirement and I hope that's going to be okay with my weight loss. <laughs> I hope it doesn't screw it up <laughs> because I don't know when I'm going to be eating now. I've been eating on such a ske good schedule until this week I screwed up again, but mm. we'll see. At least tomorrow I got to get up early and go to the laundromat and hopefully I can get back and take a walk. I need to get out on a walk. I haven't done a walk all week long. And that's one of my biggest um, problems. So that's that's what I got to do tomorrow. That's my goal tomorrow is to get out on a walk. So anyway, I'm going to upload this and say good night. Emergency alert. Endangered missing a young man with autism. Details. I'm getting an emergency alert. Oh, got to check it out. Okay. <sighs> Sorry about that. It's talking to me. If I see him. Anyway, I'm just sitting here falling asleep on the camera. <laughs> Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be dressed tomorrow. <laughs> I was going to put a nice shirt on, but it's so, I didn't know it was going to, it's, gosh, it's already a quarter to nine. Um, it's past my bedtime. So I better get on it. I still have to wash some dishes from this morning. <laughs> anyway, at least the laundry's packed. I had put it in a bag to carry it downstairs, so it's ready to go to put in the car in the morning. So that's half the battle. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.